Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Good evening and welcome to our midweek ministration. It's good to be here again teaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to you. Happy new month to every single person. Surely this month you shall have unspeakable testimonies to the glory and praise of his holy name. We are in for a treat this month of June because God has packaged glorious things for us. This month we shall be looking at the wonders in God's word. And today we shall be looking at the topic, Open Down My Eyes. The psalmist said in the books of Psalm 119 verse 18, he said, Open down my eyes that I might behold wondrous things out of thy law. And I'm believing that God through this ministration today will open our eyes to see wondrous things out of his law in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Our sight is so important. What we see is what we get. What we see is what we reach. What we see is what we become. What we see is what we accomplish. The reality of life is based on the perspective that we have of life. That's why the Bible says in the books of Matthew chapter 6 verse 22 that the eyes is the lamp of the body. If your eyes is healthy, then your whole body shall be full of light. That tells us how important our eyes is to the rest of our body. No matter how strong we are physically, if we don't know where we are going, we will become easy prey for the enemy. We, no matter how strong we are physically, if we don't know where we are going, we will fall into the ditch. So it's important that our eyes be healthy and we can see wondrous things out of God's law because that will give us the roadmap to where we need to get to, which is our destiny. And I'm believing that God, this month of June, it will open our eyes of understanding to the glory and praise of his holy name. In Jesus' precious name, shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you very much for the month of May that gone by. We thank you for your wondrous testimonies, signs and wonders. Thank you for your word that came forth with power. My Father, my God, at this month of June, we commit into your holy hands, Father. We ask that you open our eyes of understanding today and you reveal wondrous things out of your law to us, to the glory and praise of your holy name. Lord, we ask that in any way, in any place in our life, there's darkness, that you will shine your light into it, to the glory and praise of your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Now, welcome to the month of June. I'm sure that you're excited as I am, because this month of June is surely going to be wondrous for each and every one of us. I'm believing that God himself will unveil the truth and the mystery of his word to each and every one of us. And then we will become full partakers of divine nature. Because one of the ways we can get access to divine nature is the words of God. The words of God, the Bible says, is powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12. And we, we are made to understand that the, the words of God is also the sword of the Spirit. As the Bible has described to us in the books of Ephesians chapter 6. So it's important that each and every one of us get fully acquainted with the word of God so that we can apply it to different areas of our life. The Word of God is not just theology that is just for reading and, and just for entertainment. It's something that can be applied practically to every aspect of our lives. Whether it be in our marriages, whether it be in our business, whether it be in our personal life, whether it be for growth, whether it be for financial reasons, the Word of God is applicable to every situation. So I'm believing that this, this month of June that God himself will open our eyes to see wondrous things out of his law in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Now let me begin today's sermon. Open down my eyes to build wondrous things out of thy law. Now let me begin with a short illustration. Two salesmen were sent by a company that makes shoes to an island to see how they can grow the business. Now, on getting to the island, the two salesmen had an agreement among each other that, you know what, you go left, I go right, so that we can cover more ground um, today, and then we can continue um, our fellowship in the evening, so to say. So, within a few hours, or a few minutes rather, the first salesman returned back to the hotel room, called the manager who had sent them to the island to see how they can grow the business, and said, sir, I've walked around this entire island and I can't see any way we can make any form of business or profit in this island. Nobody is wearing shoes. Oh, okay. Please get me on the next thing smoking so I can go come back home 
and get back to work and then at least makes the money uh, makes the business or the company some money well the second salesman has gone out and several hours later he came back and so excited he called home the manager was a bit upset with him thinking he has not checked in for several hours but he was so excited that he could hardly contain himself finally he contained himself and he said to the manager he says sir we have hit the jackpot of life what do you mean the manager said he said nobody in this place is wearing shoes that means we can sell every single citizen in this island a pair of shoes that means our profit and our sales will skyrocket the same island two salesmen but two different perspectives what do you see will determine what you can accomplish now we are looking at spiritual things because we are asking god to open our eyes to build wondrous things out of his law now why do we need to see spiritually i believe that's the fundamental question that needs to be answered why do we need to see spiritually number one until we can see spiritually we cannot see the quick fulfillment of god's word in our lives many of us have had great prophecies told to us by men and women of god whom we trust but because we have failed to see it we are not acting in the direction of the prophecy we are simply being dormant and you see i've said time without number that any faith that makes God only responsible, then that's an irresponsible faith. But you see, once you see something, it will be very difficult for you to doubt it. The Bible says in the books of Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, that without faith it's impossible to please God. So once you see it, you begin to believe God, you begin to act in the direction of your faith, and in no time you will see this fulfillment of the words of God in your direction. Now, once you begin to see things spiritually, even when it's not conceivable and when it's not, sorry, when it's not logical, it becomes conceivable, rather, when it's not logical. For example, if you see pigs flying in the air, that is not conceivable because naturally pigs don't fly in the air. But because you have seen it, your seeing overrules your logic and then it becomes something that you can work with. Now, when God tells you you are going to be great and you have realized or you have checked history and statistics of your family background and your heritage that nobody has ever made it and nobody has ever gone to university or higher institution or college, or talk less of having a master's degree or having a PhD, then and somebody is telling you you are going to be great, it will be very difficult to, for you to perceive it logically but because you are seeing with your spiritual eyes it becomes conceivable that's why god spoke to jeremiah in jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 12 jeremiah was asked by god he said what do you see and then jeremiah replied he said i see the branch of an almond tree then the lord said to him he said you have seen well for i am ready to perform my word when you begin to see, then God is ready to perform. Because that is in God's movement in your direction. That means, in this context, seeing is actually believing. Although we are talking about spiritual things now. You're seeing with the realms of the spirit, not your physical eyes. So don't misquote me and misjudge me. Number two is that in the journey of life, there will be challenges. Now, I've heard um, many preachers of God teach contrary to this. And they have said, well, we, have, we don't have any problems. We don't have any challenges. Things are just going to go rosy. And I said to them, well, that means the word of Jesus in the books of John, chapter 16, verse 33. John 16, 33 is invalid. Why? Because he said in the, books, in, the, in the Bible that I have told you these things so that in me you will have peace. In this world, you will have troubles. Say, but take heart, I have overcome. John 16, 33. So either Jesus is lying or the preacher is lying. But personally, I choose to believe the words of Jesus Christ. 
So challenges will come. That is inevitable. But when challenges come, once we have seen things, we have seen with our spiritual eyes, we have built wondrous things, it keeps us on track. If you read the scripture, you read the story of the uh, young boy called Joseph. After all that has been done to him, his own blood brothers sold him to slavery. His master's wife lied against him, wanted him killed, but they put him in prison. The jailer or the, the oh, armor, armor bearer, cup bearer, forgot him for two years. After all that has been done to him. In the eyes of the world, Joseph is supposed to be bitter. But get what? In the books of Genesis 50 verse 20, the Bible says there that Joseph said, You intended to harm me, but God intended it for good to accomplish what is now being done, saving the lives of many. So once challenges come, because you have seen spiritually, your perspective is different and therefore you are able to be better, not to be bitter. Developing resistance to things that can take you off track will be done once you can see spiritually. Ask yourself this question. When Joseph, as a young man, when every hormone in him is thinking immorality at that age, his master's wife presented himself to him on a platter of gold. And the young boy, the only thing he could think about is, Lord, I don't want to offend you. Is that how can I do such a wicked, a wicked thing and sin against God? That's why the psalmist said, he said, your commandment have I hidden in my heart. So am I not sin against you. Psalm 119 verse 11. Once you see it, it keeps you on track to your destination. May you not be derailed. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. Number three, once you see it, it says, when you see the invisible, you can do the impossible. Now, there was a prophet by the name of Ezekiel. And if you read the scripture in the books of Ezekiel 37, the Bible talks about the valley of the very dry bones. It means they were not only dead, they were very dead. But yet, when God spoke to Ezekiel, and began to show him things from the realm of the spirit. Ezekiel was not looking from his physical eyes anymore. He began to see things from his spiritual eyes. And the valley of the dry bones became a mighty army. When you see the invisible, you can do the impossible. So it's in your own best interest to ask God to open your eyes, spiritual eyes, so that you can see what is not naturally seen by all men. Number four, once you see spiritually, it gives you access to uncommon blessing that's hidden in plain sight. I love the scripture in the books of Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 18. The Bible says there, it says, Having the eyes of your heart enlightened, that you may know what is the hope to which he has called you which are the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. So there are some glorious inheritance that has been given unto you. But because you cannot see them, you cannot access them. That's why many of us are like a man standing in the middle of a lake and yet we are thirsty. So once you see, you begin to be able to get access to it because your eyes of understanding is open and then you know what those things have been prepared for you for through, through Christ Jesus. Once you see, you become aware of this presence around you. Once you see, you know you are kept in safety wherever you go. For he has said in the books of Psalm 91 verse 11, For he will give his angels charge over you to keep thee in all of thy ways, not some of thy way. So you are entitled to divine presence. Have no fear that you will go out and have an accident and then you will end up in a wheelchair. There should be no fear in you because you have seen his presence. Remember the story of Elisha and his servant in the books of 2 Kings chapter 6. When they came to arrest him, the young man, the servant, was very jittery. He was afraid. 
But guess what the prophet said? He said, don't be afraid. For those who are with us are, are more than those who are against us. Because he could see spiritually. What you see will determine what you get. Number five. What you see gives you a perspective or the right perspective of your true identity. I am what God says I am. Many times life poses to us awkward questions because of our past, because of our present, because of the things they have known us for. But believe me, uh, honestly, the Bible says if any man is in Christ, is a new creature, all things have passed away and all things have become new. Because you have seen yourself as a new creature in Christ Jesus, you know you are a child of God. And therefore, no condemnation is in Christ Jesus. I am forgiven. For by grace I am saved through faith. So it is not I can boast of anything. It is the righteousness of Christ that has been superimposed upon me. I am redeemed from the curse. For curse is the man that hung it upon the tree. And Jesus has been made a curse for me. Galatians 3 verse 13. I am the righteousness of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21. I am blessed with all spiritual blessings in high places. I am blessed in my going out and coming in. Why? Because Jesus has paid the ultimate price. So I am what God says I am through Christ Jesus. What you see gives you the correct and right perspective of your identity in Christ Jesus. Now, how do we accomplish all that has been said? I've told us many things. I've given us reasons why we must see in, in the realm of the Spirit. Now, we cannot do anything without God's help. And thank God that he has given us the Holy Spirit, which has been released unto us from the days of Pentecost, and is still available till today and until Jesus comes and comes to take us home. So we must understand that we need the help of God in all situations. There's a way that seemeth right to a man, but the end of it is destruction. And I'm praying that none of us will fall into destruction in the precious name of Jesus Christ. So the first thing that we need when we want to see through the words of God, through the lessons of the, the lens of the Spirit, is that we need God's help. And we need God's help through the Holy Spirit. And believe me, the Holy Spirit have gifts. If you study the books of 1 Corinthians 12, they list out the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not just the fruits in Galatians 5.22. So, you must understand that you need the help of God. Number two, many of us ask for the help of God, but we ask God as if he's our houseboy, he's our servant, he's our maid, he's somebody we can send or send on an errand. But let me say this, he is a sovereign God who does whatever pleases him in the heavens. And you must understand that if you are going to approach any man of dignity, for example, the Queen of England or the Prime Minister or the President of the United States, many of us will spend time to prepare. Likewise, when we are going to see before we are going to see the Almighty God and ask for his help, we must prepare our heart. Remember, our heart is the place where God seeks to dwell. And therefore, have your heart ready to meet with your maker. Number three, you must walk constantly in obedience to his word. You see, many of us are waiting for a new instruction, but we have failed to obey yesterday's one. We are waiting for God's new big idea, but yesterday's revelation, we are yet to walk in it. We seem to be gathering and collecting. We seem to be collectors of ideas or collectors of revelation when we don't work with any any of them so it's important that you begin to act on the instruction that's been given unto you walk in obedience walking in obedience means you are living and practicalizing obedience as a lifestyle you are practicalizing obedience as a lifestyle number four is that you meditate upon god's word now, people ask me, how do I meditate? And I ask them a very simple question. Have you ever been worried? They say, yes. I say, well, that means you can meditate. If you can worry, that means you can meditate. 
And meditation is simply digesting the food of the, of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, so that our body can absorb it and begin to act on it. We can draw out the nutrient from it. Simply put, make the Word of God your priority. Study to show yourself approved. A workman that not is to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. It's important that we meditate on God's word. Because Joshua 1 verse 8 tells us clearly that this book of the law shall not depart from our hearts, from our mouth, but we shall meditate upon it day and night. Then are we going to be entitled to good success. So make sure that you are meditating regularly on God's word. Feed on God's word. Remember, they say you are what you eat. So if you're eating the word of God, you will become like God. And believe me, if no mountain can stand before God, then surely no mountain shall be able to stand before you. Then number five, we need to pray. Prayer is the key. Prayer is the master key. Many of us would prefer to attend a praise jamboree, a praise night, a praise, um, I don't know, uh, fiesta, whatever they're called. But we will not attend a prayer meeting. But I want to tell you and I want to encourage you that you should en en engage in serious prayer. Life is a warfare. And until now, the Bible says from the days of John, John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffered a, a violence and the violence taken by force. So engage in prayer, an aggressive prayer. This is important. And the last but not least is that you apply it. Please apply the word of God. Many times we hear, but we are not doers. And as you have read, the motto of our ministry is that we are hearers and doers of God's word. So make sure that you are applying the word into everyday life. If you have a problem applying God's word, then begin to ask for the Holy Spirit to help you so that you can begin to apply it in everyday life. And I'm believing that as you begin to do this thing, more revelation, more insight begins to flow your way because you must obey yesterday's instruction for you to get a new one today. Now, what are the benefits of doing all of this stuff? Number one, what you see is what you become. What you see, you can reach. What you see, you can attain. What you see, you can accomplish. When you see the invisible, you can do the impossible. What you see becomes your reality. So open thou my eyes, that I might build wondrous thing out of thy law. I'll share testimony as I begin to close with you. Some time ago, I was reading the books of Matthew, and I was reading the books of Matthew 28. For those that have read the Bible, you will realize that most part of that scripture is covered in red, which means they were direct words of Jesus. Now, I read Matthew 28, verse 18 and 19. The Bible says there, then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given unto me. He said, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And I was reading and reading and I said, Stop, Lord, I need to ask a question. And then I said, Lord, just indulge me for a second. Now, when you say all, you mean everything, the whole, all encompassing. If you want to be mathematical, you say 360. Now, if you have all the power in heaven and on earth, then what power does the devil have? That it seems to be harassing people. It seems to be terrorizing people. It seems to be making people of no effect. It seems to be truncating people's destiny. What power does the devil have? And I ran out of the room. I ran back in. I saw something in his word. My eyes was open. I saw wondrous things out of his law. These are many more have I seen, and these are many more makes me live above any human law that can restrict, restrict my destiny or truncate me, that can place a limit over my life. Open thou my eyes, that I might build wondrous things out of thy law. I believe this should be our prayer this month, and I'm believing that God himself will begin to speak to us in strange ways we shall begin to see dreams we shall begin to have revelation and insight that's uncommon that will take us from where we are to the zenith of life in the precious name of jesus christ i believe you have been blessed shall we pray father 
In the name of Jesus Christ, we give you glory and honor. We give you all the praise. You're worthy to be praised as there's no one like you. Lord God of heaven, we pray this month of June, you will open our eyes of understanding. You will reveal to us mysteries out of your word. And each and every one of us shall be raised to a new level, to the glory and praise of your holy name. Thank you, my Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus.